What I can tell you is that there's definitely more to Machu Picchu than just Machu Picchu. Evelyn's hand has been bitten to death when she stood still for about one minute. Wow, this is amazing. You won't believe it. It's been misty the whole day, but it's opening for us. It's so beautiful. Good morning, guys. We are now on the expedition train to Aguas Calientes. That's where Machu Picchu lies. The good thing is that the entrance to Machu Picchu is currently very limited in numbers and it's free. And also the train tickets are like 60% off from their usual prices. But before arriving there, we'll be in this train for the next four and a half hours. To get out of Cusco, which lies at 3,400 meters above sea level, we first had to climb up 200 meters in a very zigzag fashion and then started our slow descent over the next three and a half hours until we reached Aguas Calientes at an elevation of 2,000 meters. This big elevation change came with a big change in scenery. We practically began our trip in a desert and ended it in the middle of the jungle. Guys, we made it to our hotel room here in Aguas Calientes. And what I want to show you is actually the view and yes, it started to rain. So we're gonna spend a little while here and relax because we are still tired from yesterday's adventure. And today's four and a half hours in the train, in the train. At least the view is beautiful and the surroundings just worth noting about Agos Calientes is that you have to expect the price to be up to double as high as in Cusco but there are some hidden gems that offer food at a reasonable price like this one which is close to the station this is Agos Calientes which is translated to warm waters or hot waters because there are also thermal baths here which are currently closed though the city itself is not very interesting it was founded in 1901 by farmers later in the 1920s it was a camp for the workers who built the railway here and later when finally the tourism for Machu Picchu started it's when it grew to what it is now there's a population of about 4,500 people but it's mainly restaurants bars and hotels but now because of covid a lot of it is closed many stores are closed bars are closed the market which is behind me is also closed the scenery around the town is just beautiful and awesome with all the huge mountains around us a great scenery really looking forward to visiting Machu Picchu tomorrow now we are walking along the river the general direction of the river is north and it starts in the east in the Puno region where we've been two videos ago if you didn't watch it yet check it out from here on it's flowing northwards into the Amazon River and then into Brazil and later on into Manaus where we've been well I don't know how long ago this area just beautiful surrounded by the huge green mountains just almost straight up and the river down below and yes I'm wearing a jacket but not because it's cold but because there are mosquitoes here Evelyn's hand has been bitten to death when she stood still for about one minute and we being the smart people coming from Cusco, where there are practically no mosquitoes, didn't think to take any mosquito repellent with us. That's why I'm wearing the long sleeves, even though it's pretty warm and humid. We followed the rails that lead to a hydroelectric power plant for about one hour to visit the botanical garden that Evelyn has read about. Guys, check this out! This looks so awesome! All those green mountains. If it weren't for this those two electrical cables, we would think that we are midst in the jungle. So beautiful. Good news, everybody. You see, my arms are free. We found some mosquito repellent and even for only three soles, which is less than one dollar. Now we can enjoy this place without sweating like pigs in the jungle. What Evelyn always says. No, 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 no. He says that and I always tell him that pigs actually don't sweat. We are now in a place called Mandor. It's a little bit of a special place. They have a botanical garden here and also a waterfall that you can visit and some beautiful leftovers of a car. In the past, the grandfather of the owner, when he arrived, everything was flat because they had like a tea plantation once here. And then when the grandfather arrived, he used it to farm animals. But later on, when they declared Machu Picchu a World Heritage Site, this was considered to be a protected area and they weren't allowed to do any farming anymore here. So they decided to do a garden here to reforest the area. Later on, we actually reach an area that has been preserved. Let's walk around here. Maybe we we'll see some beautiful birds because there are actually colibris here. But it's really hard to spot them and especially photograph them. Right, honey? Yeah. You are seeing one? Uh, 
Yes. Okay. And if you are wondering why we are so excited, there are no hummingbirds in Europe. Uh, so yeah, turns out it's full of colibris here. They're like, just in this spot, we haven't moved at all. We've seen four of them and they're moving from tree to tree. Oh, they're so fast. Really hard to take a good photo of that one. just entered the preserved forest. That's how it looked here originally before humans arrived. That's at least what they told me. It does look completely different. We are arriving at the second waterfall. And let's hope that it's a little bit more impressive than the first one. So no idea if you can hear me. This is the end of our beautiful day here in Aguascalientes. After the four hours in that train, it's been really wonderful walking around this region. The scenery, this awe-inspiring landscape. What I can tell you is that there's definitely more to Machu Picchu than just Machu Picchu. You come here, maybe stay two nights, visit Machu Picchu early in the morning and then in the afternoon take three, four hours out of your day to visit this area, this place, because it's really beautiful. You can see colibris, waterfall, birds and a beautiful, awesome scenery. Good morning, everyone. So it's about 4.50 a.m. We have breakfast at 5 a.m. downstairs. Then we have to walk for about five minutes to reach the bus, which will leave at about 5.30 a.m. That's the first bus that will be leaving for Machu Picchu. It then takes about 30 minutes on a nine kilometer road to climb the 400 meters up to Machu Picchu. And at about 6 a.m. we'll arrive there. Sadly, it's been raining the whole night. I hope it stops raining at some point. So we'll be able to see something and have a nice time up there. But see you there. This behind me that leads from up there from the mountains down to the city that is down there is actually the Inca Trail. The Incas destroyed the road that leads to Cusco. That's why the Spanish never discovered Machu Picchu when they came here in the past. And that's why it's preserved like that. They were really smart about it. They never finished building Machu Picchu. As soon as the Spanish arrived, the people escaped to another town further down river. And that's another reason why it's preserved and it wasn't rediscovered until 1911 when it was studied by a professor from the Yale University. Wow, this is amazing. You won't believe it. It's been misty the whole day, but it's opening for us. It's so beautiful, more magnificent than I actually expected. Back there you see the mountain Huayna Picchu, 2700 meters. You can actually walk up there in normal times. Right now it's closed, but if we come in a future time, we'll go up there. See all the mountains around us back there. You could, if it weren't that misty, see the, the Andes Mountains uh, with the snow up to 6200 meters. And back here, this is actually the Machu Picchu mountain. It's about 3000 meters high. And we are now at 2400 meters. This is the most epic scenery I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Machu Picchu was actually used as a sacred place and it was not really permanently inhabited, at least not until the time that the Incas were conquered by the Spanish. No children lived here, no families. It was just like men and women, mainly in ceremonial robes. Uh, whenever people came here, they came here on the Inca trails. There were 33,000 kilometers of them. The people came here to do their ceremonies and then went back to their homes. The royals being based in Cusco. Like here you can actually see the sun, maybe. I don't know if you really see it. And below the sun, on the right side, there's like a V form. That's the Puerto del Sol. And on the winter solstice, no, well, summer solstice here on the southern hemisphere, the sun will pass exactly through that V. That's why it's called Puerto del Sol, or well, sun portal. Beautiful how they build it. Also, when you see the city below, see the agricultural part here. 
the peasant quarter here on the entrance. And back there, it's now hidden in the mist, is the noble quarter. We are on the Inca Trail. There's the main entrance to the village, which obviously in the past had a wooden door. And the wall was also taller, but some of it fell down. And because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, they are not allowed to build more. I'm still stunned at how beautiful and amazing this is. Back there, you see some granite rocks. That's actually how everything looked up here in this hill. It was all made out of these rocks. That's actually what they used to build everything. They didn't have to carry the stones from somewhere else. They were all up here. An impressive 10,000 to 15,000 people worked here per day to build this amazing monument. And they weren't actually slaves. No, it was a honor for them to work here and build this. You just have to come here. The most amazing place I've ever seen, to be honest. now in the peasants quarter only men lived here and you see behind there there are like two buildings about three to four people slept in that place they didn't live here permanently as i've said before just when they were here and between the buildings you had actually the, their toilets when the city was rediscovered in 1911 i think it was covered in vegetation i will show you later how it looked i really would have liked to have seen it 100 years in the past it must have been beautiful Here you can see the bushes, here or also back on this side. This is actually how everything looked in here when the professor came here. Everything was covered by that kind of bush. Down here, this is the amphitheater where they had their community meetings. It's where they ate, it's where they had parties and music. And on the back side is the women's quarter that would also become the concubines of the king. Here we have the imperial type of building. As you see, they are very, very tight. They really use like sand and water to polish them, make them completely straight. Then they align them almost perfectly without any gap. And then in the end, they didn't finish actually, but they would also polish the outside and make it completely straight. Here you have the sacred rock, which has actually exactly the form of the mountain that is in the back. Behind that rock, the way up to Huayna Picchu, which is currently closed, actually starts. Down here you can see some of the terraces and the stairs that lead down to them. But the thing is that they actually go down, down to the valley. And where you see the bushes down there, there are actually more of them hidden below them, but they haven't been cleaned yet. And I also don't think that they are going to do it just to show how it looked when it was discovered. Pananjiskama, which in Quechua means Auf Wiedersehen, sorry, see you later. <laughs> Bye, beautiful place, most amazing place, definitely come here, it's worth a visit. It looks way better in person than in any photo you've ever seen or any video. And also take a guide for sure, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. We are thanking Freddy, our guide over there, he's been awesome for the last three hours explaining everything. And without a guide, it wouldn't be as awesome as it was. Now, I'm actually speechless, so I'm letting you go. And you know what? Comment, like and subscribe and see you again next time. Bye!